smoke, endless smoke. And it was getting cold because it was blocking out the sun. You looked around because you're bewildered. And then we saw a fire. We ran along the sides of the ship. And after a while, even the railings got hot because the heat came up through the steel. The flames race aft. The sailors begin to abandon ship, diving into an ocean of fire as thousands of gallons of burning fuel oil leaks into the sea. I told them, don't put your life preservers on because the oil will, you know, the fire will burn you. You have to be below the water. Otherwise, you get down, you've got to go under the water, clear it, which they brought you in boot camp. Rescue boats from surrounding vessels brave the flames, oil, and smoke to drag fellow sailors to safety. In the end, 200 men are rescued. At 7 a.m., the Mississinima lists heavily to port, capsizes, and sinks beneath the waves, carrying 63 sailors with her. The Heaven Shaker has left its murderous mark. The sinking of the Mississinewa would prove to be one of the only victories for the Kaiten. The program was a dismal failure. Only roughly half of the Kaiten pilots released from the I-class submarine ever even saw their target. Over 2,000 Japanese submariners on the mother submarines carrying Kaiten into combat were lost as well. The results were dismal at best with a weapon that had high hopes. Japan and Germany's development of unconventional secret weapons was a tactical failure. But the existence of these shocking tools of destruction would drive the Allies to their own top secret weapons program. One such secret initiative, codenamed Aphrodite, developed an ingenious weapon a radio-controlled bomber packed with explosives, a precursor to the modern-day guided missile. But the effort will cost a prominent American his life. Go to Kids House at www.kids.house.state.tx.us, where Texas kids meet Texas state government. August 12, 1944, a U.S. Navy PB-4Y-1 Liberator, codenamed Suit Suit Black, takes off from Fairsfield Air Base in England. At the controls is 29-year-old Captain Joseph Kennedy, Jr., elder brother of future President John F. Kennedy. His co-pilot is weapons systems officer Wilford Willie. The two men are veterans of dozens of dangerous combat sorties, but today's is no ordinary mission. In July 23, 1944, the Navy set up what was called Project Anvil, which was the U.S. Uh, Navy's counterpart to the Army's Aphrodite. And what that entailed was uh, stripping down a PB-4Y1 Liberator from all of its components except those used to fly the drone with and pack it in with up to 20,000 pounds of uh, Torpix high explosive. The aircraft is also equipped with state-of-the-art radio and television technology. Suit Suit Black is a massive radio-controlled bomb tasked with destroying one of Nazi Germany's most feared secret weapons. In the summer of 1944, Germany unleashed some of its most secret projects, which were the V series of weapons. V being the German word for Jolkenschlag, or revenge type weapon. The first of the new revenge weapons to be unleashed is the V-1 buzz bomb, followed quickly by the V-2 ballistic missile. And now, Hitler prepares to complete his trilogy of terror with the V-3 supergun, a very long-range artillery piece capable of lobbing heavy shells from Mimoyek, France, all the way into the heart of London at the rate of two a minute. The B-3 was particularly fearful because it could launch up to 600 projectiles within the city 
and there's no telling how many thousands of people might have been injured and killed during such an attack. The Allies make a concerted effort to neutralize the V-weapon sites dotted throughout the landscape of northern France, but the secret German bases are guarded intensely. These installations were so heavily reinforced with steel and concrete that conventional bombing was not harming them. Allied desperation reaches a fever pitch. An idea is proposed that would merge the latest technology with outdated war-weary aircraft, resulting in a rudimentary guided missile. In June of 1944, about two weeks after D-Day, the 8th Air Force in England got the approval to launch Project A, which stood for Aphrodite. And that was an innovative program to take war-weary B-17s, load them to the gunners with as much as 11 tons of high explosive, and by remote control, using the brand new technology of television to guide them across the English Channel and guide them into precision targets, mainly the one sites. The Navy piggybacks onto Aphrodite with their own version of the program, codenamed Project Anvil. The only difference is the type of aircraft. The Navy flies the PB-4Y1 Liberator. They begin stripping out components from the aircraft. The entire bombardier station was stripped out, all the gun turret equipment was stripped out, all the hydraulic and electrical gear used to power the turrets were stripped out. And then it started being filled in with uh, Torpex high explosives. Approximately 400 boxes of the explosives were placed. The plane is rigged to fly by remote control. Two television cameras are fixed in the cockpit. One showed the instrument panel so that the drone controller in the other airplane could see the heading, the altitude, and uh, whether the wings were level, and also he could monitor the engine operation. But the second camera was mounted in the nose, looking straight ahead, so that when the drone operator had the target in sight, he saw exactly where the drone was heading. A pilot and co-pilot are needed to take the drone into the air and arm the weapons system. They then relinquish command to the radio control officer aboard an accompanying PV-1 Ventura that acts as a mothership. Once the drone was in level flight and it was confirmed that the drone operator did have positive control, at that point the armament officer would flip the switch and arm the high explosives aboard that airplane. Then he and the pilot would bail out over England. The radio control officer aboard the mothership monitors the drone's flight across the English Channel through the lo-fi TV monitor. Once over the target, the drone is sent into a steep dive, exploding on impact and causing an irreparable amount of damage. It is an incredibly risky mission, especially for the pilot and co-pilot of the flying bomb. This is a top secret mission that required the best of the best. And men such as Kennedy and Lily were such men. On August 12, 1944, Kennedy and Willie are part of a massive secret mission to take out the V-3 supergun bunker in Mimoyac, France. In the late afternoon of that day, they take their lumbering liberator into the sky on a date with destiny. Ice Road Truckers, this Sunday and now on History. August 12, 1944. Captain Joe Kennedy and co-pilot Wilford Willie lift their massive flying bomb.